allow me to ask you few simple questions. What will you choose out of the two options? $100 today or $100 after one year? I guess the answer is pretty obvious. You will choose $100 today, right? How about $100 today and $150 after one year? I'm sure now you are thinking of taking $150 after one year. But what about $100 today and $105 after one year? Maybe now you are scratching your head as both options look equally good. The reason could be that you can safely take $100 today and earn 5% by putting it in the bank, thereby making $105, right? So both options are pretty much the same, right? Congratulations! You just found the time value of money and that is the increase in value by 5%. So if there is one topic that is most important in finance, then this is it. Time value of money is the foundation on which the world of finance is built. And today, we'll discuss this concept of time value of money in the most simple way. Hi all, my name is Dheeraj Vaidhi from wallstreetmojo.com the home to most authentic information on finance and accounting. Let's get started. The time value of money concept is divided into two parts. The first one is future value and the second one is present value. Okay, These are the two core concepts within time value of money. So let's discuss each one of them. So let's start with future value first. So what do you mean by future value? Future value is simple. What, whatever is written future value, that's what it means. So say for example, if you have $1,000 in your hand, right? And you make an investment and the rate of return is say 10%. So what will be its value after let's say one year, two years and three years and so on and so forth? That's called as the future value. It's as simple as this. So let's look at the calculations of you know how much will be the value of your investment let's say for thousand dollars which you make and the rate of return that is expected is 10%. So what will be its value after year one, year two, year three and so on and so forth. So let's do that. So year one so if you look at $1,000, your $1,000 should grow by another 10% over and above the principal amount that is $1,000, right? So 10% of 1000 is $100, right? So the total amount should be 1000 plus 100, that is 1100. So in Excel, what we do is we write it in a very basic and an easy format. So that is, we'll link this up to $1,000 and we multiply this and we increase this number, the original base, with 1 plus and the rate of return, that is 10%. So what this does is it increases the original amount, that is the principal amount, by 1.1, right? So what we get is 1,100 as the answer, correct? So this is the year 1, the future value of your $1,000 investment. But what about, let's say, year 2? What will be its value after two years. The value after two years will be that it has grown from 1000 to 1100 in year one and another 10% it will grow from year one to year two. So the formula will be very simple. Instead of now $1000, it will be $1100 and then I need to increase this base by another 1.1 times. So this is, instead of writing 10%, I'll have to link it. So this will become 1210. So what will be the value at the end of third year? The value at the end of third year will be whatever is the value at the end of second year and you again increase it by 1.1. So that is what we will get as 1331. So this process of you know finding this present value and we are kind of increasing this every time by 10% year over year, this process is called as compounding. Okay. Remember this, this is very important. This is a process of compounding. We are increasing it year over year by 10%. Okay. 
Another thing to uh, look at in while we discuss future value is that the formula which I have written here essentially takes, let's say for year two, it takes for the values from year one. For year three, it takes the value from year two. There's another way in which we can express this formula. And that's what we are going to discuss it now. So the formula for year two value can be expressed like this. This will be $1,000 multiplied by 1 plus 10%. So what is this? This is essentially the year one value. Remember, this is $1,000 is the initial investment. You're making it grow by another 10%. So this is the year one value, right? Now for year two, you have to multiply this again by 1.1, right? So that's what I'm going to do. 1 plus 10%, that is 1.1, okay? So primarily what's happening is this is coming twice, right? So when I enter it, this comes out to be 1, 2, 1, 0. So it's essentially the same thing, right? Now, but instead of, you know, multiplying this twice, you know, instead of that, I can write it in a much simpler way, that is to the power of 2. Is it fine? This one will be the value after year 1 and after that, there is a to the power of 2. So how do you think the formula will look like for year 3? I guess uh, it should be fairly simple. Let me just copy and paste this formula. And uh, instead of 2 here, obviously this will be 3 because we are talking about the value at the end of year 3. And this is 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay. So for the sake of simplicity and display, let me just, uh, you know, display the formula for you. So for year 1, it is like this for year two. The formula looks like this. And for year three, the formula looks like this. So it's pretty straightforward. As you can see, one plus E5 to the power of one, one plus E5 to the power of two, one plus E5 to the power of three. So remember that compounding of 10% is happening like this over year one, year two, year three, and so on and so forth. So that's how the formula looks like. So the formula that we discussed for future value, it can be mathematically written as something like this. So future value is nothing but your initial investment that is C0 and multiplied by 1 plus R to the power of N. So N is the year, okay? So it will come as 1 for year 1, 2 for year 2, 3 for year 3 and so on and so forth. R is nothing but the rate of return. Okay, so the formula looks fairly simple and this is how your future value can get calculated. Now let us look at the second most important concept in time value of money and that is present value. Okay, so how do we understand present value? Think of it like this. Think of how much amount should you invest today? Okay, how much amount should you invest today to earn, say for example, $1,100 at the end of year one? Okay, get it? How much amount should you invest today? in order to earn $1,100 at the end of year one. Obviously, this amount that you invest today will be different from 1100 And I want to understand what that amount will be. Okay, so that's called as present value. And how do you calculate present value? I'll, I'll discuss the formula as well right now. Okay, so let me write this year one, let's say $1,100. And let's now discuss the formula. So in order to find the present value, what we need to do is to take the value which you want at the end of first year and then divide it by one plus your rate of return, right? That is 10%. Okay, so you will get $1,000. So carefully look at this formula here. In this case, you're dividing it by one plus your rate of return, okay? And if you look at the compounding part of it, what did we do? We basically were multiplying the initial amount by this 1 plus this rate of return, okay? So on one side, this is called as compounding. On the other side, this is essentially discounting, okay? You're discounting it to present value. And how do you discount? You discount by dividing it by 1 plus your rate of return. So this is how you calculate the present value of cash flow that is generated at the end of first year, okay? So let me write this as at the end of first year. But let's say, what is the present value for certain cash flow that you generate at the end of second year? What will be its present value? Okay, so let's look at that 
formula. So in this case, uh, let me take the same example year two. Let's say this is one two one zero. So formula will pretty much remain the same. In this case again, you will divide this one two one zero by one plus your discount rate that is rate of return that is ten percent and to the power of two because this cash flow happens at the end of second year. So you have to discount it twice, right? So you will get thousand dollars again. And how about a certain cash flow that happens at the end of third year and you want to calculate the present value? So let's take the same example. Year three, let's say you get one three three one. So we know the answer, but we just are figuring out the formula here. Okay. So here this will be one three three one divided by one plus your discount rate to the power of three. Correct? So this is how you calculate the present value. And let me just display the formula for you so that uh, you know you can also understand how the formula goes from one year, two years and three years and onwards. Okay. So for the first year, second year and third year. So the only difference you can see is with the discount rates, right? One plus E5 to the power of two for the second year, one plus E5 to the power of three for the third year. Okay, so and so on and so forth. So this is how you know you can calculate the present value. And remember, most important, this is also called as discounting. So on one side, when we were talking about future value, we were compounding, the value got increased with each year. Here, when we are calculating the present value, the value is discounted, okay? And it is discounted at the rate of return or the discount rate that we are using. Okay, the same thing, can be expressed by way of a formula, right? And uh, as we saw in the future value, this is the same similar kind of a formula here. The formula is pretty simple. Present value is equal to C. This is the cash flows. Okay, so let's say for the nth year, if this is the first year, this will be C1 divided by 1 plus R to the power of 1. What is R? R is the discount rate. Okay, so likewise, let's say if this was the third year, so cash flow in the third year divided by one plus R to the power of three. As we conclude today's discussion, a big thank you to everyone who tuned in from the Wall Street Mojo team. But hold on, the financial adventure continues. The next episode unfolds on Friday and we're super excited about what's in store. Make sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on the financial insights coming your way. Until next time, this is the Wall Street Mojo team signing off. Stay informed, stay engaged, and stay Wall Street Mojo awesome.